Hello. I've been listening to you all and y'all are talking about how in the heck are you supposed to get the performance you want out of your virtual team members? Should you even bother hiring somebody if they're not going to be able to come into your office and you can look at everything they do every second of the day and you worry that maybe they're not working at all? Well, let's talk about it because right now you're at Talmar's Truth Happy Hour. Right here, right now. I'm Talmar Anderson. This is Boss Action, and we are here for happy hour. So I just first off want to cheers you, boss. Cheers to you and all that you do to grow your team and build your business and all the little pieces that go on out there and leave you wondering, what is my team doing for me when I'm not around? So cheers to you. I'm going to give you some tips to put your mind at ease so that you'll better understand how you can best work with your virtual and remote team members. So this is a big question, especially as a lot of people are starting to build businesses and take advantage of the fact that there's great employees and expertise spread out all over the world, right? This is a real thing and it, it definitely goes across many industries and it doesn't matter whether you're talking about getting operational and back office support or you're talking about people really fulfilling for your clients and your customers. So we can do a lot of different layers when it comes to virtual or remote teams. But there's three tips that I want to share with you that really will let you uh, be successfully manage and set the expectation and allow them to be as awesome as they are. So um, when you have remote workers or a virtual team, um, remote would be uh, somebody that it probably is more often in working with you, but is allowed to go to do offsite work, either at a home office or something like that. Virtual really means that their whole world is delivered from anywhere they want and has very little to do with your location. So not very different and the management uh, tips and tricks should really be used the same way, regardless of what you call it or what your own perspective is on the remote versus virtual. But what we're trying to talk about is if we don't see them do the work, how do we know we're getting what we pay for? That's the big fear that I hear from a lot of bosses. I'm paying them all this money. How do I know that they're really working the time they say they're working? Are you getting the results? I mean, come on. The value you are paying your team is for the results they deliver. And as long as we're clear about what we expect from them, we're, we're getting the results that we want, We'll manage to the result. Don't worry whether they worked 3.5 hours one day and 4.25 hours the next day. If they're giving you the results that you've agreed upon and you find value for, they're doing the job. Who cares whether they took an extra bathroom break or who cares whether they worked a little different hour time. If you're getting the results you want and they're performing well or exceptionally well, why do we need to know that every minute that we're paying for is really being dedicated to us? That's the value of being able to work with these people. Their expertise, their experience, their skill sets are delivered to us in a way that is flexible for them. Now, flexibility and scheduling, that's a whole other thing, and we'll talk about that a different day. If you have questions about that, of course, reach out to me. I'd love to discuss it. But the first tip I have for you for your remote and virtual teams is if they're delivering the results you want, the value's there. So be happy, manage to the result, not to the time clock. That's always gonna be your best bet when working with a remote or virtual team. I would challenge any team. But again, a conversation for a different day. So if we're talking about our remote and our virtual teams, the second thing we wanna think about to really get the most out of that team is for you as a boss, even if we're talking about vendors or independent contractors, for you to set up consistent and reliable meetings with them. You need to be in front of your people continuously. Anyone, anyone that you let represent your company, either as a vendor, independent contractor, or employee, anybody that's applying work that your clients are gonna see, anyone that's designing something that is gonna represent your company, anybody, is a member of your team and you should be managing them. Now, management means different things. It might just be 
a monthly check-in for a vendor that's really delivering on an expertise that is outside your lane. And so you need them to report to you the success, the challenges, their recommendations, and make decisions. But you still want to be in front of them. Are they getting what they need from you? Are you getting what you need from them? How is that working out for everybody? And if you can be consistent with these meetings and don't push them off because it's just an independent contractor or don't push them off because they're an employee, they should understand the boss is busy. You have to make this time and be there for them available and consistent. What you do by giving them the space to ask questions and be accessible is you create a loyalty and a communication pattern that they know they can rely on. And if they can rely on that, they're much, much, much more likely to come to you when they have a problem that can affect your business, that can affect your clients. If they have that consistency of knowing that you are around for them and that you are delivering for them and you're available to answer their questions and you're getting them what they need to be successful for your business, they are much more likely to be forthcoming and look out for you and your business when they have an issue that could interrupt that. So be consistent with your meetings. Just because they're not in the office doesn't mean that they don't need access to you. So please build that in, make it consistent, and don't move it for your clients and your prospects. Your priority is your team. They can't help you if they can't get to you. So please, and I would tell you that if you have virtual or remote people, once a month is not enough. Bi-weekly is really my recommendation, especially if they're any kind of a operational supportive or if they're in deliverables for your clients or customers in any way. Bi-weekly is the absolute furthest out I recommend you, you putting that contact. Weekly is preferred. Bi-weekly is the worst case in those situations. So um, really can be consistent set the schedule and make it about being available to them so they get what they need to serve your business the way it needs to be met. All right, so first one was, that's right, we care about results, not the time clock. The second one was meetings and be consistent. And the third one, the third idea that I have for you is to really, if you're still worried about culture, which is one of the biggest questions people ask, how do I, how do I build a team? How do they get to know each other if they're, One's in Texas and one's in Utah and one's in Ireland. Well, one of the best ways to do that is through this social media channel that is allowing us to be accessible and have teams that are so far away. So whatever your communication channel is, if you use Slack or you use any kind of instant messaging or a social platform or however you communicate with your team, create a channel that is specifically for some of the personal things that you have in common. You know, when you vetted that team and you found some alignment with them, there was something about them that you gravitated to, that you felt like they would be a good team. And oftentimes that results in a commonality. You all like to travel and take vacations. You all like dogs. You all like um, food. Maybe you're all foodies. Whatever it is, create a channel that has nothing to do with work and encourage people to share photos and stories. And it's okay for them to go in the middle of business hours and be like, oh my goodness, I was on vacation in New York yesterday and I took this beautiful photo and I just have to show it to you guys. And let them bond over something that they have in common. This social channel, this social platform ideology is about connection, especially so much when you have teams that are in different locations being mindful that that can be an asset, that it's not a detriment. You're not worried about them. If you have one channel, maybe two channels, you're not, they're not going to spend all day on that and not get you your work because you're managing to results. So we know that's not going to be an issue. You've hired the right people, so we know they can do the job. So they want to share some pictures and get to know each other and know all the names of all their different pets, right? Wouldn't you like to know a rock star? I know Katie Nelson knows a rock star that likes to be scratched behind his ears. And I just want you all to understand that these social platforms in a virtual and remote team are something that can really help you cultivate that culture and that team um, feeling even when we're separated. So those are my three tips. It's not so hard to have a virtual team. It's not so hard to have a remote team, but it does take the effort of a boss being in front of them, being accessible, and really understanding the value that these remote and virtual people bring to you. Now, if you're not getting the performance you want, the results you want, 
I'm going to challenge that you may not have had gone through the Escape the Hiring Loop program yet, and I'd love to talk to you about that because it is about having the right people doing the right things in your business that make the management piece, that piece that people feel is overwhelming, much, much easier and much more enjoyable. And it's so much more quickly shifts your business into that success that lets the boss be supportive because a boss provides the tools, the team builds success. So I just want to help you guys get there. Cheers to you one more time, all your virtual teams, your in-house teams, your remote teams, your part-time teams, your full-time teams, to the secondary teams and the primary teams, to all of the people that are out there helping you with your business. They're looking to you, boss, to tell them how to be successful. And if you need help understanding that, communicating that, or even defining what a successful role is, We'd love to talk to you at Boss Actions. Cheers to you, boss. Get out there and grow that team. Talk to you next week. Bye.